Welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, MMA Creative Vice President, Democratic Operative Mike Kopp, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host, Steve Gill. Welcome, gentlemen. Nice to see you. Could be a game changer this weekend. We taped this on Friday, Saturday. Rick Perry is supposed to announce he is uh, going to run for President of the United States for the GOP nomination and really could change the whole dichotomy of the G Republican primary. Yeah, things like this can always go one of two ways. You've got, is Rick Perry going to be the Fred Thompson, the Ted Kennedy, the guys that look great on the sideline, once they get in they flail and fail miserably, or is he going to be the game changer? I think he's got more of the prospects to be a game changer. He seems to understand what not to do. He can raise money. He seems to be having uh, the intensity as you get into the race, and he's kicking it off going to South Carolina, New Hampshire, Iowa. He's Places. Stepping all over the Iowa straw poll, all over the Iowa uh, affair, which has him kind of made uh, a little bit mad in Iowa, but he is going to dominate the news this weekend. You can tell he's a game changer because the Republican blogs have been fired up with people in, in different camps starting to attack his record as Texas governor. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing that unless you thought he was going to change the dynamics. And he crosses a lot of dichotomies, a lot of genders out there because the Christian right will come to his side, the Tea Party people will like him. The money people of the party will probably like him. He could take out three or four of the eight that are in the primary in one fell swoop. In a great story fire. to tell. I mean, jobs are the focal mm -hmm. point. This is a guy that's seen a million jobs created in Texas in this last year. He's created more than half the jobs that have been created in the entire country, or at least they've been created in Texas. There's reasons. You've got the oil industry. You've got uh, an economy that's been running in a different direction than the national economy. And I don't think all that's going to bode well for his uh, for his pitch. And it does become a Romney Bachman. Perry race right out of the box. But it also does hand, hand the president some really good opportunities to, to sort of position himself against a, a, a clearer con, you know, mm -hmm. contender. If you look at you know, Texas history in, in terms of one in four Texans not having health care access, which is important to the Democratic cause. If you look at the fact that education is one of the lowest ranked states in the country in terms of investment in education, those are all things that play well to the president's agenda. The other eight GOP contenders in a debate this week, Fox News debate, and really not a lot of news was made. I guess what came out of it, Romney kind of ignored everybody and talked about the president. Pawlenty and Bachman went after each other. And Newt Gingrich actually got the most applause. So interesting debate, but I'm not sure if many people saw it this early on. Look, we've all done the debate prep and debate <laughs> process with candidates before. It is almost impossible to do an eight-person debate. Yeah, you get to say people. something, and then 15 minutes later, you know, they're trying to wake you up again to remind you that you're still in the game. Uh, some of those guys, I think, went 30 minutes between being able Santorum to say anything. was saying, I haven't right. said anything all right. night. So, so what you're doing is trying to just grab that glance, that impression that people get that next morning with the, with the news. You need that eight-second and sound bite that people pay attention to. Newt got a little bit of that. The, the bachman uh, Palenti battle got some attention, but I'm not sure that it changed the dynamic at all. Yeah, I think that at this point what you're trying to do is stay relevant in the race. So as long as you're on the stage and to Steve's point, can say something that's picked up by the blogs and the news, then you're going to be, in, you know, you're going to be okay. And the front runners like Romney played it perfectly. You just want to not do anything to hurt yourself because all these other guys are going to get, you know, weaned out in the process. It's going to get down to the three or four that matter as we move towards Iowa, move towards New Hampshire. Romney's got the money. He's, he's in for the long haul. Some of these guys have to sprint to stay alive. Mm -hmm. He's looking at the long game. It's a game of attrition, and most of these guys aren't going to make As it. As you mentioned, the Iowa straw poll is this weekend, Saturday. Does it really matter much? It seems to always be a fringe poll, and it looks like Ron Paul could actually win it. He's not going to be the Republican nominee. Well, it matters less because you've got Rick Perry, who's not there, that's going to have a dominant effect on the news. Sarah Palin is going to be driving her bus around Iowa, who's, so he's who's not, not going right? to be in. Uh, and again, when you look at the history of those who've won the Iowa caucuses or the Iowa straw poll, that would include President Mike Huckabee, <laughs> President Bob Dole, a whole host of folks that aren't president and never will be president. What it does do is help you raise some money from those that are on the fringe of politics. Gives you a boost. It may not completely understand the dynamics of it. If you can go out to some, some people that are on the fringe and say, look, I'm winning in the straw polls. Give me some money. It might actually free up some dollars. Let's talk the stock market up and down, up and down all week long. People in America are saying, hey, they're pointing at Congress. They may not be to blame, but that's who they're blaming. Uh, Tennessee Congressman Jim Cooper says Washington should get off his vacation, go back and try to deal with this crisis. At least he's trying. I guess the real question is, is that, is that the solution? Congress is really not responsible for the stock market, but people think they are. Well, I'm going to be anxious to see if in two weeks when President Barack Obama goes on his vacation that taxpayers are going to be paying for, whether he's going to be calling the president back to Washington <laughs> to get out of the Martha's Vineyard and come back to Washington. I mean, that's, that's a sideshow. Frankly, I mean, the whipsaw effect of the stock market this week, I started to wear one of those neck braces. Yes, it's, yeah, it's up right, and it's right. down. Right. You know, I, I was talking to a friend today who said, look, the credit rating of Congress just got cut. It's kind of like that commercial where the guys are working in a fish and chips restaurant wearing the pirate 
pirate costumes. Maybe Congress ought to have to wear pirate costumes, <laughs> get back to work until they get our credit rating restored. I think, as you talked about earlier, the poll numbers show historic levels, low levels. People have no more confidence, and even in their own members of Congress. What Jim Cooper, I think, is trying to do is at least show that to the taxpayers that, that we're willing to work, or at least some of us are. You may not like what we're doing, but we're going to try to try to fix it if we but can. But Cooper needs to keep in mind that the Republicans in the House, and he voted against it, passed cut, cap, and balance with Moody's and Standard & Poor's said would have avoided the debt downgrade. The Republicans passed in the House, and 47 senators voted it in the Senate, a plan that would not have led to the debt downgrade, and Jim Cooper didn't vote for it. American people are saying by polls, everyone in Washington should go away. They don't want to reelect anybody. But these are the people who are in office. What do they have to do to solve some of these problems, get some more jobs created, as well as to regain the confidence of the American people? Well, you got to quit doing what hasn't worked. And unfortunately, what we're getting from the Obama administration, Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid, is we need to raise taxes. That didn't work. We need to spend more stimulus money. That didn't work. Quit pushing the agenda that doesn't work. And let's go in a different direction, things that we know work, by cutting taxes, uh, cutting the spending, getting our budget balanced, and giving business an opportunity to know that there is a way for them to make money, prosper, and keep their money. Right now, nobody trusts what's going on, and they're not going to invest anything. The stock market aside, which I don't know if they can really have anything to do with that, consumer confidence and spending is going to be really critical, and it's up a little bit, but it, 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 back to Steve's point, members of Congress and the President don't need to do anything that's going to in any way sort of make consumers a little more un, unwary about spending some of their dollars. But people are afraid out there. They have nothing else. They want some of that fear relieved. And I guess that's the, going to be the job of Congress. You can't necessarily fix the stock market, but you can relieve some of the angst out there. That's exactly right. Well, I don't think you're going to do that until you literally have a change in the policies. You've got this super mm -hmm. committee that's right. now going to, going to take over the job that Congress has been able, unable to, to hammer out in the public light. We'll see what they come up with. But unless they come up with something that really does change the dynamic and get people back to work, get the economy turned around, it's going to be a long 18 months till November. I think the other thing that's hurting us, too, is what's going on in foreign policy, the war <laughs> in Afghanistan, the, the deaths this week. That just piles right. on, you know, the taxpayers fear that, that there's not a lot of good leadership right Right now we're not making the right decisions. My cop Steve Gill, appreciate your time and your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.